Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome everybody. Okay, alhamdulillah. Uh, MashaAllah, alhamdulillah. Welcome to our first uh, of many, inshallah, of Coffee with the Principal, where we'll be hosting educational workshops for you, our parents and families, inshallah, because we strongly believe in the school and the home working together. I'd like to introduce myself, especially to our new families. Welcome to our new families as well. My name is Salma Ahmed, and I'm the principal of this Skokie campus, which consists of students from preschool all the way to fifth grade. My colleague, Ms. Sadia Sharif, is principal of middle school, high school, and HIFT, and she will join us shortly after she has settled the 11th graders as we are beginning our PSAT exams for the high school this week. First and foremost, once again, welcome to all our new families and returning families, and thank you for working with us, and inshallah, we have had a smooth start to the school year, uh, and we really thank you for all your flexibility and cooperation. We also treat your students as our amana. Alhamdulillah, thank you for trusting us with your students as we strive each day for their growth and well-being throughout the school uh, classes and many activities. Parents from the Skokie campus, I urge you to check your weekly email from your classroom teachers. Every week they send a detailed email of everything that has been going on in class and what will be upcoming the next school week as well. And we also have contributions in that newsletter from the elective teachers, from your Arabic, Quran, Islamic studies teachers as well. So it's really important that you read through that thoroughly and also they also provide links for you to get ahead in the game and prepare your child for school for the following week. Inshallah, we will also look forward to uh, having shared the students' growth through parent-teacher conferences that are coming up on November 3rd. That is oh. School is in session. Alhamdulillah. We do have map scores that we will share with you at the parent-teacher conference as well as the, your child's report card on November 3rd. So once the, the um, appointments are set out for scheduling those, please do, do go ahead and sign up as soon as possible. Now to the program, inshallah. For the program here, we have invited our MCC Academy's full-time school counsellor, Mr. Abdul Aziz Saeed. MashaAllah, he has been with us for many years, going on to his sixth year this year. And he has a very interesting topic that we all want to learn more about, how to speak to our uh, uh, children so that they will listen. So how do we learn to listen to our kids? This is really, really important. So alhamdulillah, we will talk about that and uh, also just a little bit about our Counselor. Alhamdulillah, he does zoom in on the social emotional well-being of our students and also instills and helps us instill the value of the month each month as well. So uh, also throughout the program, inshallah, we'll go ahead and have Mr. Saeed begin. We will also hear from our superintendent, uh, Mr. Habib Qadri, later on in the program as well, as Ms. Sadia Sharif, our principal of college prep. So at this time, Mr. Aziz, if you are ready, let's go ahead and begin the program. And uh, we go ahead and screen share. You have all the, you are the co-host, so please go ahead. Bismillah, let's begin with the topic today. All right, Zakla Khair. Ms. Ahmed, I will be like Minish Shaitan Rajim, Smilla Rahman Rahim, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, was Salat was Salam, our Snabi al Kareem, Salam, our Alikum, everyone. Welcome to Coffee with the Principal, the Counselor Edition. My name is, uh, as Ms. Ahmed was very gracious to introduce me, my name is Abdulaziz Sayyid or Mr. Sayyid, uh, and I am the school counselor uh, at MTC Academy. Alhamdulillah, this is actually my my first year being full time. I've been part time for many years. So, um, all right. So, I would imagine everybody can see my screen. Okay, got it. All right. So, the topic for today is how to listen. So your kids will talk. Um, and again, there's there's many different elements to cover here. And we'll, inshallah, go over that today. So the agenda for today is, again, we'll go over an overview. And I have a little activity that I do about who's the expert here. And we'll, we'll do that. Um, we'll talk about our purpose as parents. Because um, in especially in the modern day and age, there's so many um, pressures that parents have, you know, I got to make my kid an athlete. I got to make him, you know, go to the best university, get the best job and, you know, have the most secure future, get the best spouse or the youngest ones, which is like, I got to make sure they don't like eat something and choke or something. So from, from the really little, little ones, to the really old ones, you know, our purposes varies, but there's a primary purpose, 
we'll we'll discuss a little bit. We'll talk about the key tool of listening, right? In our quest to help our our children be the best versions of themselves and pursue their primary purpose in life. Uh, we'll talk about what role can listening play and why it matters um, so much, inshallah. Then we'll talk a little bit about the barriers to listening, right? What are the what are the challenges that emerge um, as a result of uh, that prevents us or you know prevents there's a gap between us and our children for an effective communication to occur. Uh, and lastly, I'll share some brief strategies around what we call active listening. Um, and I'll inshallah show some, some video clips just to kind of contextualize a little bit. I personally would love to do this in person and break all of you out into breakout groups and have some conversations. Um, inshallah, we'll make do to our best of our ability in the virtual context as well. And lastly, we'll end off with Q&A. So uh, inshallah, we will have time for Q&A. Um, if you have questions, I would wait till the end uh, for, for questions. There will be comments that I might uh, ask, and there's times that I'll be checking the chat. Um, I may not be checking the chat the entire time, so that way I don't want you to lose your questions, so please write that down. Uh, but if you feel like it's pressing, um, you can always um, you know put it in the chat, and I'll do my best to uh, keep track of it, inshallah. So... Before I normally start, I like to ask the question, who's the expert here? So I'm going to open up the chat. So who's the expert in the room right now? Who's the expert in the room? Any thoughts? No one. Okay. So no one's the expert. So, so we're just here, just, you know, we're just going to hang out. Okay. So I am. Okay. Okay, you and this is Emma parents always. Okay. So we have some 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 differing opinions here. So you're right. So some of you, again, my question is limited, right? Who is the expert on what though? Right. So who is the expert on the child? Right? Who would you say is the expert on the child? Am I the expert on your children? Or are you all as parents are the expert? Parents are, right? Now, yeah, and and again, you've seen your child. I mean, you you know, you they were born. You've seen them through the through the uh, through the lifespan, right? Now, who is the expert when it comes to what your child is thinking and feeling on a moment to moment basis? Themselves, your children are exactly, exactly. Your child is. So, the reason I'm setting this up is because. As much as we know about our children, and trust me, as parents, your nurses, your firefighters, your your you know your therapists, your teachers, your a, a lot of different things, right? Now, the one of the challenges is that there's a world inside of our children that it's hard to be completely in tune with. You can, can we can observe what what our students may be doing or feeling from the outside. But our child is the only one that can confirm or deny that, right? So I want to start off with that. And then, of course, you know, some humor, you know, uh, when when another parent says, oh, my kid would never do that. And the rest of us are like, yeah, yeah, your kid would never do that, would they? <laughs> or as children, sometimes when you're like, stop, stop, don't do anything. And they're like making faces and 10 seconds later, my nose is bleeding. What's going on? Blah, 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 blah. Uh, and of course, in public, when kids are not really paying attention, then we're just, you know, give them the stare, just like, you know. And many of us, of course, as if we're children of immigrants or immigrants ourselves, you know, uh, we were especially aware of that face to the, the you know, raining daggers a little bit uh, that our parents made to make sure, like, hey, don't make me look bad. Or, hey, you better behave. So, what is the purpose of parenting? So let's start there, right? What is the purpose of parenting? So I want to hear from from uh, our parents. You know, mashallah, you guys are the experts. What is the purpose of of parenting as a, as a concept? What do you all think? You can put it in the chat to guide and to teach. Okay. To raise a, a human being positively impacts the world, teaching, guiding our children to be good people, to raise a good human being, to guide them, to raise our children, 
with good ethics to protect and to guide, right? Being there for them. Okay, let's get a few more. Right? I'm, I'm hearing more of the, um, our job is to help them grow, to take care of them, to protect them and to guide them along, right? Which again, it's very much the case to, to raise good and happy Muslims, okay? So really at the end of the day, I mean, we can, there's many different ways of looking at this, right? So at the end of the day, most parents, at least to me, uh, and again, my perspective is only one of them, to help our children become the best versions of themselves so they attain success in this world and the next, right? And success as we define as Muslims is worshiping and having a strong relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now that strong relationship then trickles into civic engagement. That strong relationship then engages in um, how do we take care of our parents? How do we be kind to our young ones? How do we take care of our elderly? How do we make sure that no one's getting bullied in school? How do we make sure that what's happening across the world, that they can stand up and, and fight for that, which is right, right? So mentor kids throughout their lives. Exactly. All of those things. At the end of the day, as we talk about the purpose of our lives is, is to be able to, you know, like Allah SWT says in the Quran, right? Then you know the, there is no other purpose other than to worship Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. That that is the 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 uh, the purpose of our existence. And now our job as parents is to inculcate those values. Is to create an environment to be able to help our students grow through that purpose. Now, listening as a tool, right? There's many. To, so I'll, I'll talk for a little bit here. Is is listening? can be can be very intricate now the challenge is many a times um and i'll talk a little bit about this when we talk about the barriers is where listening isn't listening anymore it's more hearing now why is listening important i'll share a little bit um there's a really good book that recently was written by um uh, sheikh Mikhail, um uh smith uh out of column institute uh when hearing becomes listening I would encourage all of you to get that book. Um, inshallah, it's really good. Um, and he talks extensively about uh, the idea of prophetic listening and responding, right? Because part of listening isn't just like, uh-huh, uh-huh, cool, cool. And to illustrate that, I have one quick video. Really quickly, I'm going to stop the share. And I'm going to switch really quickly. And there we go. Let's pull that up. So this is an example of someone who's listening but not really hearing and not really like he's hearing but not really like engaging. Just a quick example. Hey Murph. <laughs> hey Ronathan. I heard you're having trouble with your computer. Yeah, thanks for coming down. Okay, so what's uh, what seems to be the problem? Uh, so every time I try to get online, uh -huh. it's asking me for an admin okay. password, sure. but it shouldn't need a password to get onto the internet. Sure. And I should already yeah. have admin privileges on this computer. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Did you get all that? Yeah, yeah, totally. So you need admin privileges? No, no, no. no. Yeah. I already have yeah. admin privileges. Oh, okay. I just Great. need to get on the internet. Yeah. Okay, and yeah. It, I shouldn't need admin privileges. Yeah, for the yeah, internet. yeah. I got it. I feel like you're not actually uh -huh, listening uh -huh. to me. Yeah, yeah, sure. Are you yeah, actually okay. not listening to yeah, me, no, or are you saying that you okay, get sure. that it seems yeah, that totally. way? Yeah, totally, yeah, yeah, that's, that makes sense. Okay, you need to stop sure. that. Okay, doing what? You need to stop checking in okay, with me so right. much saying okay. yeah. You need to stop yeah. saying yeah. What do you mean? It seems like you're not listening, oh, and then you're it. just focusing got on it. saying yeah, yeah no, that and got it, and everything, like you took some kind of active listening class, but you're not actually paying attention. Totally, yeah, no, I don't think so. Then why did you disagree with me a million times while I said it? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm just showing you that I'm listening to you. So you have a problem with your dog, is what I'm hearing? No, That's what you're it's, clearly yeah. not listening to me. Just shut Aaron, up. Shut sure. up. Okay. Shut up. Sure. Shut up. So we'll stop here. So, really quickly, uh, in the comments, where, uh, let me just go back to the presentation really quickly and pull that up. So what was the what was the issue happening here? So it seems like he was showing that he was listening. What was the what was the issue? Uh what was the problem in this situation and why you all may think that there was not a lot of good listening happening? 
Okay. Interrupting. Okay. Not actually paying attention. Not actively listening. So what was so so it seems like he was making eye contact. He was looking at the person. He was he was just going through the motions. He was just hearing. He was just like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like he's showing he's listening without actually listening. Now, so he I would argue he was actually being attentive, actually. He's being very like, uh-huh, uh-huh. He's cutting out with the yes, yes. It was very excessive. It was almost like, you know, um, one of the uh thank you for sharing everyone. Um, and one of the books um uh, that, that I think everybody should read is Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. Um, selective listening. What is that one of the things he talks about is that people, uh, especially in the modern day and age, at times what happens is they act like a good person instead of being a good person. They are using the strategies that good people do without just being a good person. So in this situation, this person was portraying that he's, you know, from the outside, it could look like, oh, he's, he's, he's showing his, you know, he's like, yeah, yeah, making eye contact, but he's not really like listening, listening. So just a comedian example to illustrate that, uh, that can happen inshallah. So the some examples of prophetic listening and responding, right? So one of the things that the Prophet would do very often is he would turn to face the person. And, you know, I, I, I and I'll go over these and I'll, I'll comment on them a little bit. Uh, then it, it would be, you know, give them your, your undivided attention, right? Almost like you are the singular person that I am paying attention to and I'm listening to at this time, right? And he would often respond according to the person, not according to him. So, for example, the incident where uh, there is uh, there is a Sahabia who had lost her husband in the war, and she was grieving at the gravesite, and he came and he he tried to admonish her, and she basically, without looking to who it was, uh, basically was like, "You don't know what I'm going through," and he walked away. Now he could have at that moment be like, "I, you know, I am the Nabi of Allah." How, how, how dare you speak to me that way? And other people did confront her afterwards. I was like, did you, did you know who that was? And she felt very terrible. But the idea is the response is to the person, not according to just a quick, like we, we meet people. One of the principles we use in the field is we meet people where they are. And this is a very prophetic example as well. And then sometimes, again, offer advice when needed. And one of the qualities that often would come out when Nabi Sallallahu would have, you know, a relationship with people and he had it with all of his companions and the Sahabiyas and beyond, was that he would make them feel so special that they were the only person, that they felt like they were the most special person too, the Nabi of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, because of that attention and that tawajju that was given. Um, now, some of these may seem very elementary. However, the challenges especially in the modern day and age, uh, especially with the advent of um, my, my, our, our good friends here, the, the cell phones <laughs> is even if we're listening, we're doing, huh? Uh -huh. Yeah. Imagine if I was giving this presentation like this. Yeah. You know, like it's one of those things that parents don't really talk about. It's like listening, but it's not really happening. You know, imagine so I'm curious if I did this presentation, I'm talking to all of you like this, but I'm like, I, it seems like I'm talking to someone else. What is your reaction to me just doing this? Just like, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm, yeah, I'm talking to you, and, but I'm not really paying attention to you. I'm looking away. I'm just, I'm presenting like this, you know, so, you know, Allah's friends, Allah said this, or someone said this. What is coming up for all of you? If I, if I just presented like this, I'm still talking to you, but I'm not looking at you. I'm not doing anything. What's coming up? See, I can't even look at the, the notes. <laughs> Looking up. What's coming up? Disengage. Makes the speaker seem unimportant. Okay. Would we'll probably leave the conversation. See, that's that big. Thank you for sharing. Would have made, left the meeting a long time ago. See, I was still talking. Oh, my God. This is so important. Thank you all for sharing. I could have been talking to you. I could have been engaged with you. I could have said exactly everything that I just did. The only thing I would have done differently is I would have just turned away from you. Just that one singular thing. And some of you are like, oh, I'm out. I'm not, I'm not dealing with this. Because that's so important for us to face another person. 
Um, and really quickly, I, I want to go to this concept uh, really quick. I'll talk a little bit about what listening can do. I want to talk about this concept of tawajjo. All right. So for, for those of you who, who uh, you know, who have heard of this word, because um, I want to center my work around this for today. What does the word tawajjo mean? Uh, when you hear the word tawajjo, what, what, what does that come to? I know it's in Urdu, we usually use this word and has an Arabic root to it. But okay, attention. Okay, facing. Yep. And what are we facing, right? What's the wedge? What are we paying attention to? The face of the person talking to you. Talking to you, Sister Noor. The wedge is our face. Like you're paying attention to the face of the person who is talking to you. And it's such a powerful paradigm. I was reflecting on it the other day. You know, and I grew up in a South Asian household. We spoke Urdu growing up. Um, currently, you know, there's a whole bunch of languages, but whatever. Um, is, you know, in, in Urdu, at least the, what I would hear growing up when someone was not, you know, when, when, when a kid was randomly running around, you know, other parents would say, give your, give your child your tawajjo, which is give them your attention. And there is, I think, you know, sometimes we, you know, we have this very um, um, negative association with this idea of attention. Oftentimes um, with the with, with the adults that I interact with, you know, it's like, why is he doing that? Oh, he's just doing it for attention. It's like, but that's a core need. You know, our children, uh, and, and for the view who have, who have studied the social sciences know this, They've studied um, orphanages in in Europe and in um, in Russia and, and and that area like the uh, Ukraine and, and not currently but historically, right? There's tons and tons of these places where kids get dropped off and there's a whole bunch of kids just kind of hanging out. The challenge is, is that those children, despite being physically fed, physically being present, but they are malnourished. They have social emotional issues growing up. The only thing, and, and the researchers talk about this, is there's no adults that are facing them, that are taking taking them in and walking with them, and really being paying attention to them, because to a child, they don't have a sense of self unless we pay attention and they feel that we are important. Right? When we look at a child, when we look at a baby. We are telling that, hey, you are worth my attention. And this is a clinical uh, concept. It's not a, you know, if you study the works of Bowlby and some of the people who have studied, uh, you know, attachment issues and a lot of those kinds of things, right? Is that there is this secure idea of attachment where, oh, my mom or my dad or my, or the, my caregiver cares about me. So even if they're not present, I'm okay because I know they care about me. But if that doesn't work well, then there's other issues that can emerge. So the idea of the ledger, right, being able to fully be present with our children, fully be present with another person, right? We would never do that with another person. If I was talking to you, if I was a friend of yours and I was doing this, right, that would be something that would be something. And, and again, we're all guilty of it. So, but just to an idea of like the ledger, right, being able to face the face of someone that we're talking to our children are extremely important in that regard, inshallah. So really quickly, I'm just going to go back to what listening can do for you, right? It can give you data about your child. It can tell you something that you wouldn't already know. For example, your child walks in, right? And they're doing this. And they come in, they're like, mm. <laughs> You know, <laughs> what's your immediate thought as to what's happening? Where does your mind go? If they're throwing a ball or they're, you know, they have a sad face on or whatever you want to call it, right? And they're they're banging their feet and doing all these different things, right? What comes up for you? What happened? Okay. They're misbehaving. They're frustrating. Why are you upset? Having trouble with something? All of those things, right? Something's up. Maybe they had a bad day, right? So, so, so exactly. And they're upset about something. Maybe it's a bad day at school. Maybe they have a certain, something happened, right? We know something happened. Now, we can either choose to be curious about it and understand, hey, you know, buddy, what's uh, you, you seem a little upset. 
Right, and we'll talk about the strategies. Uh, black eye, okay, so that would be that would be a problem. It'd be like, okay, I need to call the school because you have a black eye. What happened? Uh, or or evil eye. Uh, I don't know what black eye meant, but go with that. Hungry or tired could be a whole different things, right? But our child is the only one that can tell us, right? So part of it is to be able to extract that information. Um, it builds trust because when we're able to listen to our students. When we're listening to, able to listen to our children, it tells them that they can trust us, right? They can come to us, that we are a safe person, um, that they can speak to, uh, that we won't necessarily react or, or blow up or we'll judge them or we'll punish them. For example, your child says, you know, I got a, you know, five out of 20 on my test and I'm really disappointed about that, right? Now, us as parents, we may have some reactions about that, right? But we'll we'll get to that point, inshallah. Um, it fosters a strong relationship and reliance on the parent that the child knows that they can rely on you, right? It fosters a sense of self-esteem and self-worth in your children, right? That they are able to know that I am important. You know, when I am talking to my mom or my dad, that they are able to put their phones or turn off the TV or things like that. Now, that doesn't mean you automatically do that all the time. We'll talk about that when we talk about interventions. Um, when we move forward, it's going to make sure I keep track of time here. Actually, let me just check my phone. There we go. Okay. You keep rolling. So again, the idea of the, what do we talked about that? Now, why is listening so hard, right? Now you all are the parents and my students are my students. And I'll just share some observations that I have for my students when I speak to them, uh, from the younger ones to the, to the older ones. Now being a child. You know, um, I remember being in, um, uh, I think sometimes we, as parents, we, our lives are difficult, no doubt, objectively hard. No one can argue that we were balancing several different responsibilities. We're trying to raise children and making sure they're safe and they're okay, not just physically, but mentally, emotionally, and now religiously. And now, of course, you know, politically, everything that's going on, there's a lot. At the same time, sometimes we forget how difficult it is to be a child. And, and to give you a, a, a quick uh, taste of it, um, you know, I was reflecting on this. You know, sometimes us as uh, professionals, we go to conferences at times. We go to a conference and, you know, over there, there's, a, you know, one day, two day, three day, five day conference. And there's a ton of information. Um, there's a, you know, the, there's there's a lot there that's being said and you have to pay attention. And it's like, oh, my God, my head is hurting. I can't wait to go back and just relax and sleep. Um, and then, you know, to to help us, there's coffee, there's tea, there's donuts, there's bagels, there's, you know, like elaborate lunch. You know, sometimes we're like, oh, they didn't even provide lunch. We have to go get it ourselves. All these different things. Our children are doing that every day. They're in school from 8 o'clock in the morning, 8, 10, 8, 30. They're going through five, six, seven different classes, depending on if you're public, private, doesn't matter. Again, they're going through several different classes, right? Switching gears every, every 45 minutes or so. And then be, and they have to sit still. They have to deal with social drama that might be happening where, oh, she likes this friend of mine or, or like, oh no, like, well, am I, are we still friends or like, when are we going to hang out? And then they have to go home and do homework. A lot of different things can come. It can be very challenging. And they're doing that every single day. Right. And then if they have after school activities or different things, it can be very challenging to be a child. Now add on to that really quickly, you know, for children, their like you know the modern research says that their frontal lobe their ability of of to be able to communicate or their brain isn't fully developed till the age of like 25 26 27 which means that they're not fully able to know what's going on with themselves and whether you're whether it's a teenager whether it's a two year old sometimes they just can't put words to it right there's a lot of big emotions that might be coming up that they don't know how to make sense of and they just can't put words to Right. And I know it's good that we help them regulate. We help them pause and we have them talk about it. There's academic pressures. There's familial challenges that might be happening in the house or in the home environment um, that they don't have all the words to describe what's going on. 
Uh, and they also may fear or worry about the consequences of what if I say something, right? When when students come to me and they chat with me, they often say, oh, like, you know, I, I can't share this with my friend because then she won't be my friend anymore. Well, well, what did you want to share? Well, I didn't really like how she called me out in the middle of class, right? Or, hey, I can't share this with my mom or my dad because then they'll get upset. Or they'll, you know, they'll they'll lose it or X, Y, and Z, right? So they 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 they're worried about these things. Now, on the other end, listening as an adult can be very hard as well. For example, you're overwhelmed with responsibilities, right? There's a whole bunch of things. I really don't have to get into it. I, you all are parents. You really know how hard it is. And as a non-parent, but an uncle of you know, twelve nieces and nephews. I have some idea of how bad it is, but I don't have a direct example of how bad it can get. Because as an uncle, I can give my nieces and nephews back and be like, see ya when we have fun again. <laughs> but as a parent, you have to deal with, you know, when they wake up at 3 a.m. being complaining of a stomachache or, they, you know, they got into a fight with someone at school. It's a whole bunch of things happening, right? Now, it takes time and effort. Listening, you sit down, you pay attention to them. It takes a lot of time and effort. Right. And there's a lot of myths around listening as well. For example, um, one of the ones that I hear from parents often is like, well, if I'm listening to them, if I'm practicing empathy with them, that means I'm agreeing with them. That means I'm agreeing with what they're saying. For example, they say, well, you know, like this teacher is so rude to me. And, you know, I, I, I spoke out of turn and she was like yelling at me or something. And it's like, and then sometimes our, us parents are like, well, why were you speaking out of turn? You know, we can talk about, we can say, hey, it seems like you're really annoyed by that, that, you know, she got you, like she, you felt like she called you out. Okay, that happened. What are we going to do about it? There's a fear around what they might say. A lot of parents sometimes don't dig at times because they fear what the children might end up sharing, because then it's like, I don't even want to deal with that. You know, for example, for the older kids, it's like, well, are you in a relationship or, you know, in a romantic relationship, in a dating relationship? But, you know, again, our values and ethics, again, don't necessarily uh, endorse that. But sometimes our children may be engaged in that. Now, what are some other challenges that prevent or make it hard? Again, of course, you all are parents. I would have loved to break you out into um, breakout groups. But what are the challenges that you personally face that you, you don't have to share personally? But what are the parents, the challenges that parents face? and being able to listen effectively to their children. What are your thoughts? Feel free to add that to the chat. Sometimes the child doesn't feel like talking, so the child may shut you out. Okay. What else? Siblings are so different to one another. It's easier to talk compared to others. Uh, so your siblings can be so different. Now, okay, siblings can be so different. One is easier to talk to than the other. Yes. Uh, multiple kids talking at the same time. No downtime to talk. Distractions. Understanding them at their level and experiences. Um, yeah. I mean, all of those things, right? It's 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 hard. It's, it, it is very difficult to to do that. And and I acknowledge that, you know, like if I, th I think, um, you know, sometimes uh, one of the things I check with the students, uh, actually, this is this is good. Uh, what is one of the main things? Um, kids are not able to express themselves, so I misunderstand them, right? Yeah, that can happen. That kids are less like going on tangents and we're like, what are you trying to say? Like, they don't share much details, all of those things, right? And I'm just going to make some notes based on what people are sharing. So I make sure to kids are home and I have the least energy. <laughs> yes, that is very true. And it is very difficult to, to do that, right? Uh, asking. Time. Okay. Nighttime, right? And then that's often with, with parents who are working full time, you're home and you're tired and you're exhausted. And that's when the kids are like, oh, oh mama, mama, I want to hang out or we we'll take care of them. So now we've talked about the problems, right? Now let's talk about solutions. Let's talk about what we can do because I don't want to be, um, you know, like I know, for example, if I told my parents growing up that, 
you know, I just don't have time. I have so much to do. They were like, well, if you really want to do it, you would do it. You know, and I'm not going to, of course, play that game with all of you. I know all of you love and care about your children. I don't have to necessarily shame all of you, you know, to like, oh, my God, if you really cared about your children, you would totally make time. I'm sure many of you have that thought. Oh, my God, why can't I just create some time? You know, why is everything so chaotic? Like, why can't I do this? Or like, oh, it's so much. I can't. I just can't. I just want to. Uh. So fact of the matter is parenting is hard. So with that being said, active listening skills. So before we we get to skills, I want to, you know, I would love to do, you know, inshallah, one of the. Uh, one of the things we'll be starting soon, inshallah, is a parent circle. I know with the the, the current security concerns, we'll, we'll keep that in mind because only a parent can support another parent in ways that, you know, like that's the, like only a parent can understand the pain of another parent, right? I, as a professional, can empathize. I have the skills. I can sit with you. I can listen to you. Uh, at the same time, the level of support that a parent can provide another parent is unparalleled. I believe that fully through and through, right? An addict can only understand an addict in some ways. You know, a child can understand the impact, the difficulty of a child. It's, it's just naturally how it is. Now, with that being said, I would encourage all of you, if for those parents who have a very good routine and regimen around listening, around time, please do share that in the chat. Um, it may not be yours. It could just be things that you've heard, things that you've seen someone else do. So please add that to the chat uh, as this record. Uh, I'm not going to address it right now, but I would encourage highly that you all uh, do that because we need to look at solutions from when people, you know, Mr. Qadri is big on this as well. And we both talk a lot about it is I can give you a theoretical model. Like I'll, I'll go over a few. But unless it's been implemented by someone in our situation with our our kids, it's very hard to take it seriously. All right. You know, so they can do a lot of those things. OK, so uh, and feel free to sh share. I'm just not going to address it at this time. So number one. So when we talk about uh, issues and deficits, right, we talk about in two domains uh, and we'll we'll try to inshallah, wrap up in a few so we can open up for Q&A. There's skill-based deficits or challenges, and then there's situation-based. Skill-based is basically that the person uh, uh, lacks the skill to do something. So for example, when we talk about students struggling with reading, students who are struggling with reading, now the question is, what is, are they not able, are they stressed out? because of the test? Is it their anxiety that's making it a problem? Or they just have struggled decoding and phonemic awareness and all those different things? Once we know, then we can intervene right. Now, the first thing is the skill of active listening, right? Uh, we'll, we'll hold questions till the end if that's okay. I appreciate you raising your hand though, but you can feel free to put it during, um, uh, put it in your, in the chat for now. But thank you so much. So part of it is, how do we practice active listening? The easiest way that I know how to describe it is listening to understand versus listening to respond. Again, listening to understand, then listening to respond. For example, um, in the situation that someone comes home and says like, oh my God, like my teacher is so annoying. Right? I mean, and it happens. And that listening to understand will do what? I'm curious what you all think. If you're listening to understand, what would you say if that if your child comes home and says that in an exacerbated tone? Okay. How would you disarm your child? What would you say if you're listening to understand? What would you ask them? Yeah. So what would you ask? So let's give it let's give an example. What would you ask? Well that's unfortunate. Want to talk about it? Okay. Hey, what did they do? What happened? You know? Yeah. Be, again, be curious, right? Now, let's say if you were listening to respond, right? Which means you already know, you already have all the answers. What would you, what would that be different? What would you say 
um, or ask that's like listening to respond. You're just responding. You're just like jumping on. You're just like, you don't want to listen. You don't want to understand. You must have done something. What did you do? <laughs> what did you do? Exactly, right, right? You know, what didn't you do? You know, did you not turn in your homework? You know, I'm sure she wasn't trying to be annoying. Like basically invalidating the student's experience, right? It's just like, we have to defend, try to ease them. Just like, hey, don't forget about it. Why are you, you know, why are you so worried? It's cool, you know, like, you know, and it happens again. We all do this, and and I say this to my my sister and my brother, you know, who uh, have their own kids, and I'm an uncle. I'm like, look, I'm doing a good job because I know as a parent, I'm gonna mess up. Hundred percent, I'm gonna mess up because there's no such thing as perfect parenting. But I know you guys can kind of fill in the gaps, right? So, uh, uncle, I know uncles and aunts can play a part. Now, when we are listening to understand, we're assuming that we don't know. Number one. So part of that is going to clarify, asking clarifying questions, just like any all of you shared, right? Is asking questions, what's going on? Hey, what happened? Tell me more. Paying attention, not being on your phone. Uh, you know, eyes are there. You, you, have, you have separated time. Uh, now, one of the things I would recommend for paying attention is if you are really busy, right? That you dedicate, hey, I have 15 minutes to talk. Is that is that enough for your conversation? Or do you want to wait till we have a, a lot more time, right? So, because I know you, you all are parents. You got things to do. You got to go to work. You, you have to cook. You have to take care of the young one. I mean, you, you have to be in school and classes, right? So, just say fifteen minutes, right? And then for that fifteen minutes, they're the only people that matter. Withhold judgment, which is don't assume you know. Like if the child says, "Well, this, you know, this this teacher was being like super annoying. She gave us all these hundred percent tests." All these like five tests in one day. Exaggerated, I know. Judgment would require you to say like, oh, but like that's for your benefit. When you, you you probably should have studied more if you didn't get good grades, right? Versus ask clarifying questions. Summarize. So what you're saying is that your teacher was being super annoying because she gave you all these tests all of a sudden and you were totally, you know, like thrown off and you didn't know what to do. And the child is going to be like, yeah, totally, 100%. Oh, my God. Like, yes, you got me. You understood me. Or here's the kicker. Here's the best part. If you didn't get it right, they'll correct you. Be like, no, 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 it's not that. It's it's just like, you know, like she just gave these tests. And then this other kid, you know, was like making fun of me for not knowing the answers. Ah, you're getting, you're getting there. They'll share more. And then sharing again, like together and then being able to reflect Oh my God, like, you know, yeah, I mean, you know, like if I just got all these tests all of a sudden, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know what to do. I, I kind of feel frustrated too, right? Reflect to them. This may sound like you're agreeing with them, but you're not. You haven't agreed with them at all. You're just agreeing and you're just understanding the experience that they had, right? For example, as I tell many students, for example, what number is this? Well, it's really bright. Ooh, let's go closer. There we go. What number is this, y'all? Six. Now, all I have to do is do this. What number is this now? Give or take. I know it's not accurate, but you get the idea. Oh, oh. It's a nine. I, I mean, you know, like I could be seeing this and I'm seeing a six, but you, you could be seeing a nine. Your job is to go around and look at it from their lens. Oh, oh, it's an, oh, 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 okay. I see it. Oh, oh, it's a nine. Oh, I see what you're talking. Oh, that makes sense. That's part of our job, right? Now, that's the skill part of it. And I, 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 I encourage you to practice this, even test runs, right? And be able to do some of that now. Um, you know, before we go towards Q and A, just really quickly, strategies to support your children. Right. The number one thing is again be able to practice listening, not fix it. For example, your child may come and like, oh my god, this 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 um, this this girl is being so annoying in class. She's just like, oh. Now, some parents may respond as like, okay, let me call your teacher right now. And your child is like, no, 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 I don't want you to do that. And then what do you want me to do? And then you're like, what do you want me to do? I can't, if I can't help you, then, you know, I can't help you. We're trying to fix it. We're trying to fall, solve a problem. 
But sometimes children just need, need us to listen. So one of the things that I, um, I often recommend is this question. Um, especially you can even, if you have that relationship with your child, you can do that. It's like, Hey, do you want me to just listen? Do you want me to help you problem solve? Or do you want me to get involved? Meaning sometimes kids just want to vent, just want to let it out. And that's it. It's like, thanks for listening. That's it. There's no solution. Number two is they want to come up with a solution, but you should help them to so ask them questions about, Hey, how can you do you know, okay, what are some, let's brainstorm together. One of the things I do to be involved, but also make them involved, I say, okay, let's take turns say, sharing suggestions. We don't have to implement them, but just share, we're just going to share suggestions. So they're like, well, I could talk to her and, and tell her like, hey, can you, you know, not, not, not do that pencil thing that you do that's so annoying. And then you can share, yeah. Um, or you can, you know, move your desk. You can ask your teacher to move your desk. So that way you're both doing it versus like you give a solution. Your child's like, I don't want to do it. And then it's like, oh, like my mom never listens or my dad never listens or whatever. Right. Number two, understand listening isn't one size fits all. For some kids, you may have to talk while you're playing ball with them. That's, you know, sometimes it's in the car. Sometimes it's somewhere else. It, it varies and you'd have to experiment a little bit to figure it out. Um, number three, don't just don't suggest they just calm down. Show them. Because sometimes when they're so upset, you can't really talk. They can't use their words either. When they're upset, they can't access the part of their brains. And just like adults, where we talk, for example, if someone's really angry, are they, you know, they're, they're not talking anymore. They're yelling, they're screaming, they're throwing things, they're pounding, they're doing this. Right? Show them how to calm down. Hey, you seem like you're really upset right now. Why don't we take a few breaths? Why don't we take a moment? You know, let's take a take a deep breath. Let's do that. Uh, number five, don't put pressure on yourself. I don't know where number five came from. It was supposed to be number four. You're sorry about that. Don't put pressure on yourself to have all the answers. Because as a parent, you're the expert on your child to a certain degree. Beyond that, it's their battle, especially the older they are. So to assume that you're supposed to protect them and take care of them and be able to get all the answers for them, it's it's not it's not possible, right? Be flexible, stay grounded. Meaning, if you're upset and you're having a bad day, just say, "Hey, I I really cannot listen right now. I'm so sorry. Let's talk um, tonight, uh, Mama and Baba or whoever you are, Guardian. I I need to take a break. I, I just had a really long day at work." You know, and they might say something like, oh, my God, you never listen. Oh, that's OK. Just like, OK, and you may say that. But children, a lot of times they'll say things that they don't mean. So be mindful of that. Practice dry runs and scaffold. Now, here's a few quick suggestions from my end. Personal ones that I've heard from Muslim parents that I've 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 talked to and, and worked with. Um, I know there's quite a few parents that shared some some suggestions up as well. Right. Ask the, to ask the kids how their day was for details on the good and the bad, right? Before they sleep, connect with them when they wind down and ease before falling asleep, you know, on the kids ride home. So my what, number one suggestion is improve your questions. So qu a question like, how was your day? It's so broad. It's so general. It's like, um, uh, what will I do or don't do? I'm not really sure. It's like, it was okay. It was whatever. So improve your question. So, hey, can you share one thing that was really fun and one thing that was not so great today? Or, hey, you know, what was one thing that totally threw you off today? And share about your day too. You know, make it a back and forth thing. And the earlier you can start, the better. Now, if your child's already older, it's going to be a little tricky because they're not used to it. So you will have to kind of figure it out, um, inshallah. And yes, I will be sharing the slides and the recording. I'll have Miss uh, Sumaya, our marketing person, handle that. Um, and then number two is to have dedicated time. That's always very, very important and very helpful, especially in a world such as ours. Um, number three is um, I like to do, I like to recommend date nights or times specifically where you take one child out. Um one of the kids' teachers sent out a sheet of questions you can ask your kids. Yeah, that was a really good one. Thank you for sharing. Uh, and I'll send some resources as well via email.